So when video games were simple, I know that S1 reacted to the video, but I thought... I've seen the video uh, recommended on my channel before he reacted it. <laughs> and I've had it on my watch later list ever since. And I couldn't watch the Asmin video because I wanted to react to this video myself. And there are, like, Kingdom Hearts and Jack and Dexter are two of my favorite PlayStation franchises growing up, bro. I... Dude, Jack and Dexter is so good. Jack and Dexter is so good. I, I, I had a crush on Jack. <laughs> I had such, such a crush on Jack, bro. <laughs> I miss games that was made with the expectation of being beaten by the average gamer. Same. What? Bro, have you seen Jack and Jack 2? Have you seen him? Uh, uh, Jack uh, 2? Have you seen him? Have you seen when he goes into echo mode? Have you seen him in Jack 3? Look at this man! Look, look at this man! I'm in the way. Look at this man! How could you not have a crush on him? You seen him? You see this? Jack is jacked. <laughs> Those ears are hot. <laughs> Those are some really, really long ears. Either way, either way, with that out of the way, let's watch the video. Oh! Oh my god. Okay. Okay. Oh my god. Already. Oh. Oh. The sound. Oh my god. Screen. Do you ever think back to when video games oh! were simple? When games could just be games and you could be an idiot six-year-old who can't figure out how to get off the starting island in Kingdom Hearts. Yeah, you actually, uh, you gotta hit the tree to get the coconuts, the coconuts oh, just, will fall I saw, down. I just hit it. I just yeah. It feels like back then they could just make anything they wanted to. Studios took chances, building experiences that, oh. while not perfect, were still iconic. And don't get it twisted, alright? I like the AAA games we're getting right now. I'm definitely not saying that video games aren't fun anymore. But I can't help looking back at all these older games they just seem better. missing oh, the check. charm that they all had, especially compared to now. They definitely weren't all fantastic, but when I True. look back at them, they all just seem so whimsical and yeah. wonderfully simple to me. And sure, you know, that opinion is probably largely shaped around nostalgia. Yeah, it's more definitely. likely I miss the simpler times in my life, which we'll talk definitely. about nostalgia more <laughs> towards the end of the video, but I do mean this literally. Oh, I adore the, the simplicity of the games from this era. When I talk about a time when video games were simple, I think a different time period probably comes to each of our heads, right? For you, it might be the PS1 or even the Atari if you're ancient <laughs> and decaying. For me, I think of the PS2 and just all those classic games from that console, like Kingdom Hearts, Jack and yes! Dash, Sly yes! Cooper, Ratchet and Clank, the weird game with the yeah! alien face on the cover <gasps> that kind of, oh my God. kind of freaked me out too much to pick up. The hundreds of stupid licensed games that came out around this time that were all just exactly the same, except that one. I, I loved that one. When every game Sorry. didn't have to be a groundbreaking cinematic masterpiece, and it could just be a fun game. One aspect I really admire about those PS2 games is that they seem Look to prioritize that. gameplay and yeah. fun over yeah. anything. Whereas anymore, it seems gameplay gets sidelined by the cutscenes and the story. The gaming industry has changed a lot over the years, okay? It's not your grandpa's GameCube anymore. We got esports teams and VR chat twerk offs now. The Last of Us is a phenomenal <laughs> game series that tells a familiar yet oh strikingly unique story. Oh my god, and he's just sitting there. Oh my. <laughs> Bro, I can't with this editing. His editing is too good for me. His editing is so good. I only played Flash games on Nintendo when I was younger, man. The drug of <laughs> Bro, the last of us! I'm, I'm still so mad how they ruined the last of us. Free ...and has some of the best character writing I've ever seen in a video game. Due to some not-so-careful redactions, we learned that on their latest entry, The Last of Us Part 2, Naughty Dog spent $220 million 
over the course of six years to develop the game. To put wow. that into perspective, they developed the first Crash Bandicoot game for $1.7 million. <laughs> With wow. that $220 million, dollars, they delivered on these stuff. They did your dirty, they really, really, really I mean, did. Cutting edge graphics, as well as creating a gripping narrative and overall impactful experience. Dude, the scene, the scene. As well as creating a gripping narrative and overall impactful experience. But when you play. Everyone, when he called her baby girl for the first time. Ooh. Play these games, it becomes abundantly clear that The Last of Us does not embrace its identity as a video game at all. The gameplay loop consists what? of you walking around slowly, looking at everything like you're in a museum, maybe avoiding some mushroom zombies sometimes. And if you walk into an area with waist height walls, you know some guys are gonna come out and try to shoot at you. The combat is passable at best and over time just becomes a boring obstacle between you and the next cutscene. It really is a shame, you know, because the world they've built is so beautiful to look at. But there's nothing to touch. I'm all for story in a game, but it should never take precedent over the actual gameplay. And hey, I'm a problem solver, all right? I'm here to help you, Naughty Dog. I'm gonna tell you exactly what you have to do to fix this problem. It's been quite a few years since I played the original Last of Us. Um, the latest entry I played was, uh, well, Last of Us 2, like, two years back? Multiplayer had some fun mechanics. I never tried the multiplayer on The Last of Us. I... I'm trying to think about... Like, I can't really disagree with what he's saying because, in a nutshell, that's what the game is. It did have some simple puzzles to go and figure out. No, there were definitely some puzzles. He he simplified it. No, he oversimplified it, to be honest. There were some... Like, I'm thinking about how you had to play as Ellie and, like, uh, do things uh, here and there and, like, literally find the proper key card to f open the door to get into the generator and all that stuff. I think he did oversimplify it a tiny bit. I get what he's comparing it to, like, compared to, in comparison to games like Jack and Dexter, for example. Gun-centric combat in modern setting is always samey. Not much you can do with that concept. That is also true. That is also true. There really isn't that much that could have done much else. There, there were puzzles to solve. There, are, there were, like, uh, lore pieces to find. The Last of Us 2 was there. The Last of Us 2 was horrible. The Last of Us 2 was so horrible. Gameplay was fine, but the story we don't talk about. It. I agree. I loved the gameplay. I loved playing it. But I hated the story. I absolutely fucking hated the story of The Last of Us 2. It was so bad. It didn't deserve Game of the Year when Ghost of Tsushima was erupted. It got Game of the Year?! What the fuck? Joel's death and Batman death really go hand in hand for her shitty writing. I don't know about Batman stuff. I didn't play uh, any Batman games. Um, I also didn't play Ghost of Tsushima. So I, I can't say. And uh, the first time I played The Last of Us 2 was literally two years ago. Because I haven't had a PlayStation anymore. Because I had to sell that back then for some money. Because there wasn't money needs. And um, yeah. When the game came out, I didn't have a PlayStation yet, so yeah, I played it two years ago, and I... Chat, I stayed away from spoilers for all those years. When did the game come out? When, when did the game come out? The Last of Us 2 release date. It came out in 2020, June. I stayed away from spoilers for two years. I stayed away from spoilers for two years. Two years, chat. I avoided spoilers. That's how dedicated I was. That's how much I loved the uh, series. Bro. The Last of Us. 
oh my god the last of us one mean it just means so much to me like genuinely i love the first game you go through a couple of levels you get us really hooked in and then you give ellie a fishtail and you have her swim around and sing a really bad song <laughs> with Ariel Hearts. from the oh little my mermaid god. and the song's got to be really really bad really it's got to be horrible no you're right you can't do that okay it's a serious game with a serious tone we don't need to do any of that you know no game Urgent has ever bubble, retained hey. a serious tone while breaking Under immersion slightly for the sake oh oh oh, oh. I'm the fun it's never been done it's not gonna happen all right bad example I'm sorry. Let's look at the Insomniac Spider-Man games instead. You know, they're wacky and less based in realism. They had a phenomenal story, except for the third act of the second I game. I'm still yet. pretty mad about that. I've Peter not played it. Peter Venom, I'm standing on that business. And the gameplay here, oh, oh my God. They got it perfect. They did it. They did what Naughty Dog couldn't do. Sometimes. I could web sling around the city all day. And they had their little mermaid moment with Venom and I guess Mary Jane now, that was all right. But what I want to talk all to right, you about right. specifically are the mini games. You know, those little moments where it's like, oh, Peter's a scientist. Here's some scientist stuff. Match up these different colors and lines because okay. he's a scientist, it's science stuff. Those have sure, got to sure. be the worst mini games <laughs> ever made. And Insomniac knows it because why else would they give you an option to skip them? It's all right, whatever. They didn't you can't just skip them. Wow, I'm going to eat. Okay, enjoy. Didn't come up that much in the first one. I can get over it. At least I got to skip them and move on. Maybe they'll take them out by the second one. Wrong. It's different this time. Now it's in 3D and you got to take out the bad shapes. It's worse. It's somehow so much worse in this one. And I know it's a relatively small problem to point out, but man, just situations like this just make me miss games like Sly Cooper that would put you in a submarine and say, there's crabs coming to steal the treasure. You have to shoot all the crabs and make sure they don't come get it. <laughs> they didn't bother trying to make it make sense within the story. They just made something <laughs> fun. I don't think every AAA game needs Jack! to be goofy, but I do think that video games are at their best when they embrace their identity as video games and deliver experiences only they can. It seems like they really went in this direction because these cinematic games have the most wide reach. They don't really want to risk it with something that- I'm a- Wow, well, we're only five minutes into the video. I'm honest, I do love- I do love a good story game. I do love a good story game, and I personally don't mind it if it's more focused on the story. I enjoy story games. It might not appeal to everyone, right? We could never get an insane concept like Kingdom Hearts made today. The idea of taking these two the insanely follow. different franchises, Final Cap. Fantasy, a JRPG Cap. series, Hi, and the Disney multiverse, and mashing them together in some big world-hopping adventure. I am... Oh my god, I'm so excited for Kingdom Hearts 4, actually, man. Have you guys seen it? More story, but less cutscenes would be nice. Mm, Kingdom ha Hearts 3 was ass. I liked it. Did you... Did you play... The previous... All previous Kingdom Hearts games? The games in between two? Because if you didn't, of course it wouldn't make sense to you. To me... To me, Kingdom Hearts 3 was good. I enjoyed Kingdom Hearts 3. It had a good uh, story conclusion to all storylines. It, it was a really good conclusion. And if you say it was ass, then you just didn't understand your story. This is my take on this. Led by a character nobody's ever heard of. That is just not something we would get today. And do you know how this idea came to be? Well, apparently back in the 90s, Square Enix and Disney both had offices in the same building. And one okay. fateful day, an employee from Square Enix and an employee from Disney just so happened to end up in the same elevator. And they got to, to be fake Kingdom Hearts story is pretty convoluted. Well, it is. It is. It definitely is. My Kingdom Hearts 3 is mediocre. That's as far as I go. I'll take that. I'll take that. But it is very convoluted. I I will give you that. It does have a lot of story lines going on. And it reaches even further into the back from the main storyline of Kingdom Hearts 3 that we have. Uh, a tornado spin! Welcome in! Thank you so much for the follow! To talk in and they were like, Hello Zap. Disney employee I just met. Wouldn't it be cool to mash Roxas up our universes is, together and Roxas then send some- Roxas is absolutely best. Roxas is absolutely fucking best. I do agree. Kid around them beating everything up with a key? 
And that, kids, is how Kingdom Hearts came to be. I read it on nice. nextshark.com so you know it's true. If there ever <laughs> was a video game that embraced its identity as a video game, it is goddamn Kingdom Hearts. This game makes no sense, but it's so much fun. Why the yep, hell is yep, Cloud yep, yep, from yep. Final Fantasy making a deal with Just Hades there. and fighting in the hero games on Olympus? I don't know, who cares? I'm Sora and I'm gonna hit this big dog with a key I found. <laughs> when you travel between the different <laughs> Disney worlds in Kingdom Hearts, sometimes the art style, the character designs, and <laughs> even Entire gameplay it. mechanics will change based on where you go. I keep referencing so the Little Mermaid level in Kingdom Hearts because genuinely when I played this, it was so mind-blowing to me. I love that even at a point so deep into this game, they were still willing to change sure. the fundamental mechanics of how you play it yeah. just to keep things fresh. And don't even get me started on the goddamn <laughs> Gumi ship. I must say it, I hate the Gumi ship. I hate the Gumi ship traveling. I hate it. I hated it in all games. In all games, I hated it. I don't know if it's Gumi or Gummy. I've been saying Gumi. When I first played it, it was kind of annoying at first. Maybe Gummy ship, maybe Gummy ship. I, I don't this? know. I but hate now, it. Now, anymore, I'm traveling between the worlds and I'm up in the Gumi ship. I'm just shooting stuff. Why the hell do I they need it. a spaceship to get between the Disney worlds? I don't know why they thought they needed a spaceship, but <laughs> it was awesome. And it was the Gumi it's ship. It's the worlds in and between. Shut the fuck you had to use it to get into the other Disney worlds. I'm not entirely sure if this is the case. Uh, uh, then it's gummy, I guess. Oops, I muted it. Oopsie. I don't know why they thought they needed a spaceship, but it was awesome. And it was the Gumi ship and shut the fuck up. I'm not entirely sure if this is the case, but it really seems to me like when games were cheaper to make, Studios were willing to make pretty much anything and just throw it out there. And listen, I was eating Back it then, up. I love. Back then, people actually have passion to make a video game. That's the difference to nowadays. Back then, people actually wanted to make a game for the sake of making a game, not for the sake of making money. That's the biggest difference. Sitting down, crisscross applesauce on the floor of a GameStop, just going through applesauce. the wall of so many different PS2 games, picking out insane shit like Marvel Nemesis, Rise of the Imperfects. I feel like I dreamed this. Sure, they were goofy and didn't exactly maximize profit, but does that mean they weren't worth making? I guess for AAA's concerned, it's just always going to be about the money. And if you want a passionate yeah. game developer, you look to the indie games. There's gotta yep, be some no, video essay YouTuber to indie, indie games. game pipeline because I was never really that into indie games, but recently I played Hades and- uh, The gameplay in the background, uh, I don't know what game that is, but that just reminded me of one of the PlayStation 2 games that was on the, um, up, up, on the demo, demo uh, disc. Um, it was like a skateboarding game, but the, the skateboard was more like a glider. I don't know if you guys know that game. Oh, I love that. And they had that music playing. Oh my god. I, oh, I've been dying to find out what that game was called and what the song in it was. Oh. And Roller Drome. And it was some of the most fun I've had playing games in a long time. While it seems the games that prioritize fun overall are only coming from indie developers anymore, there is a genre of game that was lost to time completely. Okay. And that, my friends, is the shitty licensed games. This Wait. has got to be the greatest loss in my lifetime. Those <laughs> shitty early 2000s movie tie-in. Dave Station? Let me, let me look it up if it's that. That... Honestly, it could be. Jet Set Radio? Let me see Dave Station. Dave Station... Play... Station 2 game. Well, that doesn't seem to be coming up. Anything? What? Was it Jet Set Radio? A uh, Jet Set Radio. No. No, 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 no. Uh, PS2 demo disc games. Day Station. <laughs> Welcome back to Dave Station, and we are taking a look at some PS2. Yeah, it was a game. And also, pop. Here we go. <laughs> Round like I did in a lot of the Tony Hawk's games. That's game the game! And skate games, but. That is the game! 
going, it was going, it was going, it was Where's it? Where's it? Where's it? Grind. You got grinds and grabs. This is going to be uh, rollerblades, is it? Let's have Skitchen. a look. <laughs> uh, shameless plug, old school Skitchen was an episode we did quite a long time ago, and it was absolutely fantastic. That's the game. Criterion, okay. Burnout. I think yeah. Burnout was and, the Criterion. Uh, is it Need for the Music? Porn yeah, star. So. Yeah, this Airblade. is um, going to be either skateboarding or rollerblading, guys. Oh, oh, Dude, I hoverboard. love the song. Oh, I played this. I played yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, it's I like a hoverboard. Game, guys. I'm getting all excited because it's a game I've played. It's hoverboards. I it's actually love quite good this. As well. Wow, I'm, I'm gonna look. placehold. Oh, okay, this is. Cool. I had no idea what was so going words, on. It's the demo when they put this cutscene in just there. Playing this demo over and okay. over and over so again. This would presumably wouldn't have been in the final version, or they would have changed it. I like little subtle things like that. Same, yeah. Stuff that you'll only see on the demo desk. It's cool. Yeah. Ah, oh, this looks awesome. Look at like it. Like the yeah, music. It's really good. This game. I mean, if you like the Hawks games, this game's cool as hell. Oh, wow, this is super cool. Tony Hawk so, skating. I'm guessing I'm going completely the wrong way because that <laughs> arrow is telling me where I, I should I, be going. I've never played a oh, Tony yeah, Hawk game. Am I going to meet somebody? Oh, no, I'm going to so pull a truck the right off there. accident. Yeah. Okay. What am I doing? Oh, wow. Yeah, I, 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 did, I never took this game seriously or, or played the objectives. I just messed around like I did Literally. in a lot of the Tony Hawk's games <laughs> uh, and skate uh, games. But Yeah, same. Yeah, it's I just super skated cool. around. And again, PCSX2 doing its thing. It looks really nice upscale, doesn't it? The music was so sick. Uh, either way, back to License the video, sorry. License games that came with every mildly successful property. If there was a cartoon you liked in the early 2000s, oh tie my in God. game. If uh, there was a movie I played that game. That you kind of enjoyed, tie in game. Look up any franchise that had that moderate success in this time every period movie and add the game, game at the end, and you're probably going to get some. It would be impossible to count how many there were, and they were all bad but i loved them anyway like the cat in the hat movie tie-in game what a beautiful what the nightmare fuck is that? what the fuck is that shitty harry potter games always in my heart i love the harry potter games on the playstation man i played them oh i love them so that much was. give me a bottle of dayquil oh my and god the cat what the in hell? The hat ps2 game and i'm having a great week if you've ever played muscle, one of yeah. these games before you've probably seen this little intro screen THQ. yes THQ was responsible for not all, but a lot of these tie-in games. It seemed their business model was the to the Rings buy game. up the license for this a mildly successful Didn't property, them, pump out a cheap, easy game, and launch it right when that movie or TV show was peaking in popularity so that they could feed off of that hype. And clearly it worked, because in the span of a couple of years, they oh released God. literal hundreds of games. They wow. hit the cartoons hard. They got Jimmy Neutron, Scooby-Doo, <laughs> so much SpongeBob, <laughs> Fairly Odd Parents, Tack and the Mother Fudging Power of Juju, <gasps> this one was a banger, Rugrats, Teen Titans, Barnyard, Danny Phantom, oh, yeah. Avatar <laughs> The Last Airbender, seriously, so much SpongeBob. And they hit the movies too, Cars, The Incredibles, Ratatouille, Wally, up. They had Star Wars <laughs> under their belt, and episode three was a slapper. These guys dominated the licensed tie in games, and eventually, <laughs> the they just stopped. I, love them. I was looking no. around the internet trying to figure out why they stopped. You know, where did these go? And everything I found kind of suggested that they didn't stop making them, but they moved over to the more profitable sector of the video oh. game market okay. the mobile games. Oh! Hey, uh, just was wondering, is this uh, an out of season <laughs> April Fool's joke? <laughs> oh my god. Uh, no. And you know what? Don't they were probably phones. right to do so. Even I ended up spending money in Family Guy the Quest for Stuff. I wanted to build my cohog to look cool. Holy fuck. There were a lot of these games, and most of them were bad, but for every hundred shitty cookie Anyone cutter games, game there was one. Game yeah. Odds are, if you had a PS2, you probably played The Simpsons Hit and Run, which, by all means, should have just been another shitty tie-in in, in the I series did. of shitty tie-ins. I did. I did. This one just so happened to be amazing. It was a GTA clone that was like better than GTA. In fact, it did the multiple characters, the character switching before GTA 5 did it. That means The Simpsons predicted <gasps> GTA 5. It is time to write another Kotaku article. Some of my personal favorites were the matrix path of neo oh i don't know why i liked this i'd never seen the matrix i just 
really was drawn <laughs> to this game because it made me feel like insane. I don't know. I don't know how to describe it. I loved the Star Wars Episode 3 tie-in game because it had this cool also alternate ending and I was obsessed with this fight on Mustafar between to be Anakin and Obi-Wan. And so being able to do that and get a different result just like blew my little mind. And obviously, <laughs> Spider-Man 2. I think yes! a lot of people forget this was a movie tie-in game. And even this one had great mini games. The most iconic mini game where you go around delivering pizzas with that insane music playing. Why couldn't we get that in Insomniac Spider-Man instead of match the Actually, shapes and colors. A licensed tie-in game that right. a lot of people liked was SpongeBob Battle for Bikini Bottom. And I know a yes! lot of people like this one because it got a big fat ring. We've established that the game studios are in this for the money, right? And it's safe to assume that they want the safest bets for their money. The most revenue with the least risk. No brainer. Why don't they just take things people already like and so do it again? But like yeah, make it pretty. Is. Personally, I think this aversion to risk is absolutely doing IGN gave an L review on a Battle of Bikini Bottom. They did? I didn't try the remake. I loved the original one, though. Doing damage to the industry, but what do I know? I'm just a guy, and clearly the numbers say otherwise. But I think in all of this, the <laughs> consumer is not blameless. It is me. I'm the consumer. They're only gonna do something if they know we're gonna buy it. And oh man, am I gonna buy it. I've been loving the remakes lately, I'm not gonna lie. I don't really think we needed five. I haven't played the Resident Evil games myself, but I've seen a friend of them play them. Like, he's been screen sharing all the Resident Evil games up to Resident Evil Village. That's the last time I've, uh, that's the last game I've seen from it. Like, it's not, obviously that one isn't a remake. That one is just the latest entry. But Resident Evil Village, I really like the story of it. <laughs> I really did like that story. Like, I literally watched him play and I felt like I experienced it. Like, I remember especially, like, when he was, like, trying to get into that, like, um, into, like, an early stage. And he kept dying. And fucking Leon would keep saying, Is it over? <laughs> At every single start when he died. <laughs> so much so that it became a meme. <laughs> And, like, for a little while became a meme of me just saying, is it over to him and him losing his mind over it. <laughs> that was the funniest shit ever, man. Kids should definitely play Resident Evil. I don't actually own any Resident Evil games. I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know. Five iterations of the two Last of Us games, but for example, like Resident Evil 4 remake or the Dead Space remake, or some of my favorite games in 2023. Uh, they may have been remakes, yes, so? rehashing old ideas. But I felt like in those two examples specifically, they expanded the gameplay systems and made changes that honestly was, justified a remake. In Dead Space, this was a uh, Dead Space. That's what it's called, right? Was a favorite of uh, one of an old friend, but never played it. Space alone, the zero gravity overhaul was game changing, as well as a voice protagonist where there wasn't one before. So they're not oh, just throwing stuff nice. out, you know, they actually do seem to care about some of these games. The Resident Evil 4 remake was a breath of fresh air for me because I got the quality of life from a AAA game, but the goofy, can't be fun from a PS2 game. The graphics oh. were stunning and the gameplay was tight and well optimized. And I also. It's Resident Evil in space? I see. Got to go up to the That's shady fun. weapons all right, all right. dealer and buy a rocket launcher to just shoot the final boss with. I just cheesed the entire fight. And the game let me <laughs> because it was more fun that way. The simplicity that I had been missing was right there and I loved every second of it. To me, this trend of remakes is proof that. I'm not alone in missing a time when video games were simple. And it's also proof that nostalgia can and will be weaponized shoot, shoot. at any moment possible. And memories are only good if they are profitable. I am happy that younger ah. generations and just more people in general get to experience these games that I loved as a kid. They made Leon more older and mature in the remake. Kid and see why for themselves. And also I'm happy that we get to experience these games in ultra realistic graphics, 4K huevo shrinking technology. I watched all the Resident Evil movies though. Um, the one with like the lady <laughs> protagonist. Only playable uh, with the Gigafart 8500 Giga graphics Fart. card. You, you may need, need to upgrade, upgrade your PC, PC to play this game. game. I can appreciate good graphics. Uh, bro, I can't take 
Oh. Graphics card. I can't you may need to upgrade just, your PC to play, to play this game. game. I just, I just can't. I, I, oh my god. I just no. Just no. One grip I had about RE4 remake is that it was not as funny as before. Oh, it just works. I love Resident Evil 4 remake more than the OG. All right, all right. You ain't fresh recruit anymore in Resident Evil 4. I can so it looks like sense, good right? Graphics. I mean, I really like when a game looks pretty, but I think this looks better than this, and this looks better than this. Technically, this. I'm. I, unfortunately. With this one, I do have to disagree, like, personally. I can appreciate good graphics. I mean, I really like when a game looks pretty, yeah. but I think this looks better than this. this. This, in the end, is just personal preference. Like, obviously, he's saying he thinks, right? Oh, but this also comes back down to his nostalgia. This, it looks goofy. It looks fun, sure. But I would still say The Last of Us looks miles better than the PlayStation 2 game. Style over realism lasts better, I think. That is true. That is absolutely true. Style over realism absolutely does last better. Very, very true. That's, for example, why pixel games are so timeless. Depends on what better you're looking for. But that's just generally true, not always. Yeah. And this... Looks better than this. Tech Preference again. I think for this year's his nostalgia mainly since, like literally, this is just pl uh, like this is a more fair comparison. Pretty. But I think this looks better than this, and this looks better than. This is a literally a more fair comparison since it's both just Spider Man, and here I would say again. And this. No. Like, literally, the Spider Man 2 games, the ones that came out in the recent years, did just look like the old Spider Man 2 games, just in today's graphics, personally, from what I've seen. That's more so nostalgia bias. I absolutely agree. Like, this is definitely more nostalgia. Spider Man 2 is better in literally every way than the PS2 Spider Man 2. I. Yeah, it is. It is. It looks, it looks so good, it really does, and co in comparison, like, those two games, no, the, the one for the PlayStation 4, 5, it's just better. Technically, this has higher resolution and better lighting, but this has a better art direction. High resolution textures. Okay, give us, give us the examples of the better art direction, because the scenes you were showing weren't really doing it. This... Like, has a better art direction. I guess what okay, I guess what he means in this one I don't know what he means. Like you could say maybe he means the angle, but if we're talking about the angle, that's not art direction. The cartoon style probably maybe maybe he's talking about the cartoony style. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Colors and shape, yeah. Maybe, maybe. Direction. High resolution textures and pretty lighting are always going to be outshined by... I think that's more so technical limitations. Honestly, it definitely was technical limitations at the time. It definitely was. That's how that those graphics came to be. Comic book style, maybe. Maybe. I think for him, it's definitely nostalgia ba bias. Inspired art direction. Creativity. Let him cook. Let him cook, we'll see about the taste later. And okay, okay, okay. focus okay. on atmosphere. This isn't something that's gone from modern gaming. In fact, a lot of recent games have left my jaw on the floor because they're so beautiful. Bloodborne, Bloodborne, and Bloodborne. Holy shit, blood. Uh, saying it here for chat and for YouTube, we are going to play Bloodborne on stream at one point. I don't exactly know when yet, but we are going to play Bloodborne on stream. Bloodborne, but I think it was more common to focus on art direction back then because since I they haven't, were limited. They I, I, I haven't played through Bloodborne. I have probably put like three to five hours into Bloodborne only. I think. I think. Couldn't make a realistic looking game. They had to do something it. unique. Even the game's shooting for a realistic approach could not pull off realism. I mean, that is not realism. But still, 
it's iconic. A phrase I really like and I've used before in one of these videos is that limitation breeds creativity. Trying to make a game back on the PS2, okay. I imagine was extremely sure. limiting, but I've always it made been them wanting, so I've always been wanting to play Okami. Creative making these incredibly unique looking games. I often find that when creating something and you run into a problem, that solution that you come up with to the problem leads to an infinitely more interesting and unique final product. Like I said, we still sure, get a lot of sure. stunning games coming point, out lately, but I feel like now with the ability to actually create games that are not perfectly realistic, look pretty damn real. Like, look at this. Like, the shot. It's so damn good. That becomes the only focus, is making a game that looks realistic, not one that is creative in its visuals. In a lot of ways, I miss those older games that we used to get, but I'm also glad for we'll all the games that we definitely. get now. Like Ghost of Tsushima is one of my favorite games of all time. And Baldur's Gate 3, which I made an Yo! entire video on, you should go watch it, oh! was a phenomenal experience. Might have Compare to watch that. that to the PS2 Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance 2, and it's no contest there. The only reason I might want to pick up and play Dark Alliance 2 is because I miss playing it with my dad when I was a kid. Aww. I used to live in this big greenhouse right on the corner lot and had a baseball field right across the street. Oh, yes, I think the house used to be a church. It was definitely haunted. I was eight years old <laughs> when that house caught fire. Uh, I remember Aww. I was watching SpongeBob and I walked into the kitchen and I saw these crazy flames up all over the place. Long story oh, short, Jesus. the house got completely ruined and my dad the got hurt pretty crazy, bad. Yeah. But he recovered fine. They just took some skin from his butt and put it on his hand. I call it his butt hand. This house though um, was mostly ruined and the property had a separate garage, like a barn kind of thing. And that garage had an attic. Well, my dad decided that we were gonna fix up the house ourselves and live up in that attic. Him and I shared this air bed up there and right next to it was a projector that I had hooked up my PlayStation 2 and my original Xbox oh. 2. During the day, I'd obviously go to school and then when I got home, I'd help him build however I could. You know, there wasn't much I could do, I was eight, but I remember doing things like helping him put up the ceiling or chip away at the old stone slate in the fireplace. And when we were done for the day, I would go up and play on that PS2 nonstop. Not to get into too much detail, I'm just some guy on the internet, you don't know me. But I, I was I was having a hard time. Something about oh. swinging around the city in Spider-Man 2 just made it all melt away, you know? I wasn't yeah. Zack with all this yeah, stress I, I do get all that. these problems I didn't understand, I was Spider-Man, I can only imagine yeah. how my dad felt at the time, but he always seemed happy when him and I were playing a video game together. He was just watching me play one, but we had a ton of fun and we would just laugh and hang out together playing Halo 2 on the Xbox, just going through the campaign. And it was in moments like that where it really felt like everything melted away. It didn't feel like we had just lost everything. You know, it felt like we had everything that we could ever need. And it's funny, now sometimes just hearing that PS2 sound, I'm back up in the attic with my dad. Nostalgia is a funny thing that can make you look back fondly on things that might not have been- Damn, that, that was, wow. That made me feel all warm. All warm and fuzzy, man. No, but I completely do get that. Like, games that, games that literally made you want to waste your time those days beautiful beautiful the power of gaming as a media yeah actually man actually choice for realistic graphics for the last of us was the right one considering the whole story i do agree with that that they went with more realistic graphics 100 percent and so great but we're somehow perfect in their own way. And escapism through simple pleasures like video games will always be important. I think we all have that game or just media in general that was able to give us a break from a hard time yeah. in our lives and made us hold on to that experience forever. And so now we judge that media by what it did for us rather than what it actually is. I'd love to hear yeah. if there was anything like that that stuck with you, you know, in, either in a comment or send it to my email at this point. I don't care. I can't promise I'll get back to you, but if you want to, shoot me an email. I might see it. Thank you so much for over 100,000 subscribers. Uh, Geek wow. really likes the plaque, 
So that's good. We sent it off to him. He's the real hero here. 100K is Not crazy. Song. You know, I started another channel a while ago and it took me so long. I was trying so hard to get to 100K. And with this one, I wasn't even trying. I just kind of did it. I mean, we did it, I guess. I don't know. That shit's <laughs> cool. This is a cool thing to do. Uh, this is my simple pleasure now. So uh, please simply click the card right here and watch another video. This got way too sappy. Click on some other funny shit, please. Okay, goodbye. Within the span Oh, that sound. And the PlayStation 1 sound, man. PlayStation 1 sound startup. Like, bro. Bro, bro. That's magical.